Welcome back to Dino's Garage for the YZF 750R. Now, as you've seen in previous videos, the bike's now running fine and, and had some ride outs on it, but um, I have noticed that I need to change the clutch. So, what we're going to be looking at today is me basically stripping the bike down just to the point where we need to access the clutch plates, um, and that's what this video is all about changing the clutch plates on the YZF 750R. So if it's something you need to do, something on a similar machine to this or specifically the YZF 750R, then stay with me, Dino's Garage, and we'll be getting on and changing the clutch today. So at this stage I've taken off the belly pan and this right hand side fairing. Um, basically so we then got full access to the casing where the clutch uh, basket is within and also I'm going to be undoing the drain plug and also the oil filter so obviously we just want all that oil just to to drop out into a pan underneath so obviously we need that belly pan and fairings off just to get that clear access so overnight I've had these clutch plates soaking in the semi synthetic oil the same semi synthetic oil 10w40 that will be going back into the engine in fact so, yeah. and so now you can see the drain pan underneath there so all of the oil has been draining out now for the last sort of 15 minutes or so and um, you can see the oil filter so I've taken the oil filter off taken the plug out let the oil all drain out and now I'm just about to undo all of the bolts around the clutch housing and um, we'll undo those in sequence and I'll show you that sort of up close. And so you can see all the oil is now drained out from the bottom of the engine, the, the 19mm plugs undone, the filter is off of the front, so that's all the oil draining out, there's just a few little drips coming out but that's very minimal. So now we are about to undo all of these bolts of the clutch housing. Now what I am going to do is undo these bolts very very slowly so we don't in any way distort this housing on here so what I will be doing is just gently easing off this one and then go diagonally across and then come across to this one and go diagonally across and then this one this one this one this one this one etc etc so we're working around and easing the pressure off of that housing as we go and then what I'll do is I'll take a piece of cardboard or paper and I shall put these bolts on a piece of card so we know the way in which they came off of this because you can get different length bolts they won't all be exactly the same length so you can't just go putting them back wherever you feel like it they have to go back in the same place depending on their length but let's crack on and do that bit now so here's what I mean with regards to these bolts and just making sure that they're put in the right place. So what I've done is drawn out a rough sort of picture, if you like, of that casing. And we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 bolts. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 bolts. And as you can see, I've put these marks in the approximate place drawn the window there so I know which way up it is in relation to this so you've got one two there one two there and so what I will then do is just simply take a drill it doesn't have to be a drill head it's only cardboard just puncture some holes into that cardboard like so and then obviously what I'll do is as I undo these those bolts will be pushed through these holes so we don't one lose the bolts and two the right length bolts are in the right place right so as I say we're going to go from corner to corner undoing these bolts I'm going to start with this top right corner and just heard it click there just release that pressure that tension initially There's hardly any torque on these, they're very, very easy to undo, which is always nice. Obviously when we come to do these back up, we'll check what the torque settings should be, and make sure that we do them up at the 
the same correct torque setting. And as I say, we mark the window so we know this is the bottom. We haven't accidentally picked this up like this and start putting it in the wrong corner. So just slots in there like that and so on we'll work our way around and then put those all in place but that is a very very easy thing to do um, and there's a bit of a tip really if you're going to be working on motorbikes fairly regularly keep pieces of cardboard clean pieces of cardboard cardboard's great I'm lucky enough to work in an environment where we get cardboard all the time so I can bring cardboard home but you know this is a piece of ply but equally a piece of cardboard under here is nice it catches any drips of oil and when you drop your belly onto that cardboard you're not scratching any paintwork you don't want to be doing this directly onto you know your driveway or anything you are guaranteed to drip some oil onto your driveway I've already dripped plenty of oil onto this piece of ply it's a piece of ply it doesn't matter so yeah keep cardboard especially for things like this just slide it down the side of your garage somewhere up in the roof space whatever when you need it it's a real godsend to be honest simple thing but there we go so I'll just finish off undoing and putting those back into place then we'll take that casing off now just to make the point really these are all the the bolts in place on this piece of card when I flip it over you can see that uh, most of them are about the same length but you've got two much longer bolts on this side now had you just taken those bolts out put them down on your ply or cardboard on the floor pretty much when you come to put everything back together you'll probably if you put them in no certain order not going to know where the long ones went and if you forget that you're starting to wind long bolts into here then you realize they don't go and you're unwinding them but that just reiterates that point point. Um, and even some of these here I think this one is slightly longer than this one and this one so it is vitally important that they come out in the right order and just like I say leave that to one side right so we're now at the point where I can either prise this off or tap this off or it might even just come away so got a little sort of tab in this area and we've got the dot bit here and um, hopefully with the gasket it will just come off easily there are little points like here at this hole little bits here where you can sort of get a purchase on things obviously with that at the top there so that's just coming away there now what I don't want to do is just pull it from that top bit what I want to do is ease it off so I need to sort of try and pull it from the bottom as well as oh from the side there it's nice and easy so that's it it's, it's, it's come away nicely expect some oil so there we go that's the paper gasket there looks pretty clean inside it should be pretty clean inside this bike because after being sat for eight years put some oil in ran the engine flushed that oil out then put new oil in and I've probably not even done I don't know I've probably done a few hundred miles on that second amount of oil um, but you can see you know there is some sludge in there and um, so actually although changing the oil shouldn't be essential I'm only having to change the oil because I'm dropping it to do the clutch putting a third lot of oil in since it's been sat over that eight year period is of a great benefit obviously to this bike so at this point we can see the clutch basket which is basically the housing of the clutch plates that's the metallic plates and also the friction plates and um, the metallic plates sit in between the friction plates we'll see that when we take the actual plates out in a moment um, also just to reiterate when you take the side casing off you have locating dowels here where the window was here but also this 
needs to be located in the correct place when we put this back on and that goes into that hole there so we need to be very careful that it does and also there's a rubber seal in there should that be missing or any issue with that then it's vitally important that that rubber seal is replaced but that will just slide back on to that point there so like I say that is the gasket that also needs to be removed carefully any traces of broken gasket need to be removed off the face of this before we put the new gasket back on before reassembly so what we're going to do now is undo these again in a cross sequence releasing the pressure as we go and these are the springs behind these retaining bolts and then this front plate with these springs and bolts will be removed and then we have access to the clutch plates and um, all we're doing at this point in time by the way is inspecting anything that may look wrong but just taking out and replacing the clutch plates and putting them back in in the correct sequence and that's vitally important that we've done in the correct sequence.